So welcome to another video tutorial here in my channel. This is the free version. Uh, it goes through generally some part of HDRP Unity Lighting to help some of you that might have issues or curious about how uh, we can approach it in a more organic matter. There is a paid version uh, that will be uh, completed that you can get discount or even um, promotional uh, opportunity for. If you go to lightingbot.com and sign up for the newsletter, you will be the first one to know. Um, that tutorial, that night version of this or something similar, will only be done once we have enough interest. So that includes like, positive comment and newsletter. So we kind of know that there is a purpose behind it. So with that said, we're going to do some lighting here, some simple lighting. So you can kind of see if you are on the same page and also introduce you to some of the new things that you uh, might really know how it works so as i said it's going to be organic so i won't necessarily use uh, my normal approach for that you need to join lightingbot.com and, and, and sign up for the newsletter for that kind of hands-on um, exclusive look for that so what i'm going to do first i'm going to create a new game object that's empty i'm going to call it lighting and in here, I'm going to add a uh, directional light. We're going to go out very quickly. I'm just going to click Control Shift F. And I'm going to figure out where I want the light. So, for example, maybe uh, some, somewhere around here, maybe. Or maybe around here. Cool. Now, you'll see a few things. Now, it obviously depends on your... Uh, optimization and specs as well but for the sake of the tutorial um, I'll show you in case you missed it so the shadows are pretty unclear so for the directional light you want to make sure that you increase it so because I'm gonna do it for this tutorial I'm gonna go ultra and you can see you get a lot more sharper look for that now we can keep it real time but because it's not that time consuming gonna go for a baked uh, mixed version so that's both baked and indirect right so how do you know that well you can go to the lighting mode on shadow mask and you can for example click baked indirect and it kind of states what happens depending on the type of light you use right so we're just going to keep on baked and direct for now um, for no other reason that it's a bit quicker for me right now gonna go for a GPU preview hoping it works okay and we're just gonna click uh, bake very quickly so we get an idea of what's happening the next thing we want to do is add reflection probes the reason for that is you can see there's something weird going on over here with the metal and I'll show you how I might place them in this particular case so I'm gonna go to create a new game object that's empty and in this one I will create the reflection probes right I'm gonna turn on gizmo so I can see what's going on I'm gonna for the time being place them now if you're wondering why I'm not doing any skylight first which is what I probably normally would do it's because it's an interior and I also want to show you what happens um, with, with this particular workflow which is probably what most of you do so I just want to make want to make sure that you kind of know how to um, deal with it because a lot of you guys ask the question about these uh, scenarios so I thought I'll try and replicate how you probably do it so you can see what happens and then when you join the newsletter over at lightingbot.com um, you'll get uh, a discounted version hopefully or a promotional version hopefully uh, of the paid version that kind of shows you step by step of the night version now if I bake the reflection already um, I don't want to bake it on top right uh, what we want to do is want to bake it closer to the reflective surfaces so in this case I want to move it around here so I get the most dominant reflective uh, surfaces register so I'm gonna click bake for that and you see that it's being baked now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna control D, which is duplicate, right? 
gonna put it here. I'm gonna do it again, and I'm gonna put it here. And then for reflection pop two, which is in the middle, right? I'm gonna keep it around this area, and here I'm just gonna keep it for the time being closer to the mirror and closer to the glass, right? I'm gonna select all of them, which I don't have to do, and click uh, bake all reflection pops. It's just a bad habit from from the old days. And when you get close, you can see that that's how the reflection is for the time being. Now, if I do this one and I click bake again, you can see it catches the the reflection that you want over here. Now, if you look around. Something that happens a lot is how do you change or manipulate the reflection probe to the amount or the way you want it to be because sometimes you want to have it different, right? So for that you can have the multiplier and when you have the multiplier you can see that it kind of it multiplies the reflection and it makes it look uh, kind of dimmer but it's not really what's happening. So if I do reflection bake probe now you'll see that is kind of registering a bit more and it's kind of boosting the reflection. You have the weighting. The weighting kind of says how much of it is going to be affected. So if I hold over the multiply, it says sets the multiply value the reflective materials applied to the result from the reflective probe. So these are the reflective materials that it's um, referring to. And the weight it sets the weight of this reflection probe when multiple probes both affect the same area of reflective material. The material uses the weight of each probe to determine their contribution to the reflective area effect. I'll show you uh, how this uh, works in this case as well. And there's other ways to use reflection probe as well. I'm going to show you another way that you can use it as well. So for now, I'm going to tweak it a bit to the desired effect actually for the sake of example because we're gonna fix this afterwards let's say you do this and you're happy with this for whatever reason so we keep this and you'll see why uh, that might be a problem later and i bake it now another way of doing a more accurate lighting is the the thing with the box reflection it, it creates a less uh, detail and there are some issues with the corner of the areas when you use reflection probe as well. Another thing you will notice is the blend distance. I don't know if you've paid attention, but when we're looking at the probe, um, the lighting and reflection probe, you can see it has this outer square. This is where it starts blending from here to there. So if I click this one, you can see this is already overlapping quite a lot. So these are essentially competing. So in a normal sense, I would probably have started tweaking this a little bit and cut it down a little bit to kind of make them blend a little better. Now, assume there is some issues and you want more realistic, more accurate reflection probe. Um, for that, you can create a new empty, you can call it reflection proxy. And you can add a component called reflection uh, proxy volume and what you want to do you want to cover it inside this area that you are trying to have the reflection effect so for example let's try 15 15 15 don't know if it worked but that was kind of an overkill let's do 10 10 10, tweak it a bit like so. Um, normally I edit out a lot of these in my previous videos and some of you were complaining about it because I don't really think you need to see these kind of tedious automatic robot things but you ask for it so you can see me messing around <coughs> in that case. Okay so we have a reflection proxy volume. So we're going to select all the reflection probes and I'm just going to drag this into something called the projection settings. And you already see what happened, right? I'm going to control Z, control, control Y. See what happens? 
it tightens it and it projects the reflection uh, 360 degree rather than from one angle or two angles which is the disadvantage of for example box or sphere but there are pros and cons with this of course now I can increase this to one and reduce this to one now you can see I have the reflections and this has the reflection here as well for now uh, it's all good for now so what I'm going to show you now is tweaking the lighting settings of uh, our um, environment so I'm gonna do max bonds 8 and I'm gonna do 4 I'm gonna keep the filtering on O2 this is actually on non when you do it and what happens if it's on non well we'll show you what happens because of the amount of ray tracing or, or beams being shot around you get a lot of noise uh, in this progressive GPU so to, to deal with it you have what we call fil filtering system um, in this free video I'm not gonna go into detail about those so just make sure it's on auto and you can then click rebake but before we do that we're gonna boost this up to 100 before I do that I'm going to show you what happens in case you don't know right so basically light map resolutions they define the space and the quality of your lighting especially if you're baking it uh, because that's how it does it now if I go to 100 you can see it's super tiny it's really baking to down to the detail and uh, that's fine but it's going to take more space so we're going to increase the maximum light map size which is these so basically essentially it will have a, a bigger light map so it stores more reducing it down but it's because we have 100 on our light map resolution it's going to take more space right so either i'm probably going to end up with four anyway but they're bigger so instead of 10 it will be four so degenerate lighting let's have a look and see what happens put it baked now and we want to add the global um, volume which I remember don't need probably don't need the post process volume like uh, we might be used to so instead we're gonna just for the sake of simplicity go in this folder and we're gonna create a volume profile let's call it a global volume process okay I'm gonna click add overrun I'm gonna go to click lighting and we're gonna go to first we're gonna go to exposure and we're gonna make sure we have the necessary settings on and I have to remember what that is um, Uh, okay and we have the global volume process and you can see it's not working right which is often the case you guys are like why is it not working well it's different than the post process volume right because when you have process process volume uh, you normally are making uh, the post process volume like this right but in SGRP you have to add in volume and you have to drag and drop this volume over and now you can see it's all over the place let's just put that to one two now this is important now I'm mean, not gonna go into like PBR and, and lighting flow related that's uh, for the paid version or a separate lesson even but generally you can see it was pretty bright so what you can do now is you can kind of adjust it you can go to the directional light and you can see okay it's pretty late in the day 
for early in the day I mean so you don't want to just do this because it's not really correct so when you're inside you normally want to have a 7 but for this example we're just going to keep it around 12 okay like so because this uh, reduces the um, the fact that it's super bright but it also reduces the brightness of the light okay and you can of course use compensation if you really want to blow it up but instead what you can do you can add indirect lighting controller and you can crank up the indirect light instead right so what this does it fills in the areas that you need filled in without boosting too much of the brightness that's already there if you wanted to you can uh, boost the reflection as well as well as the intensity of the probe you added but the problem is if you do that you can see it starts looking a bit weird so i try and keep it around 1.5 at most if that's what i want to do this is the quickest way but sometimes you might want to spend time tweaking the light itself so you might add 10 in indirect lighting right and you might then bake the light instead and you can see that it's starting to jump around the scene more and brighten things more which might or might not be what you want right and because we're using post process we can always tune that down and have a more closer look at what happens. Now we can tweak it accordingly as well, right? So you might go, okay, so far, maybe you don't need five anymore, maybe three can do the trick now. And you get some warmer details around as well. And you can see that uh, sometimes we get an error message that we are running out of view. It's not doing it right now, but that's mostly because of the space we're using. Which isn't necessarily per se, right? So now you can see it's kind of boosting everything a bit to be uh, a well-lit area. Because there's a lot of light coming in, so we don't want it to be that contrasty and that dark, unless there is some artistic reason for it, obviously. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tweak this. This just increases the general sample, so it takes longer to bake. I'm going to increase this to 10, and then moving on to 6. And I'm going to reduce this to 60, we don't really need to have uh, that much. I'm hoping for the 60 I can do a bigger light map. I'm gonna do a bake and bread occlusion this time. And I'm gonna do very tight, so it's tight. And I'm just not gonna have it like completely black. And I'm gonna do another bake. Because I'm baking, I know it's gonna be somewhat the same. So here I can then again cut down this again. So hopefully you understand the the different ways of solving um, your challenges and depending on the problems and the situations you can use different methods. There are other creative ways that you can do something as well. For example, let's for example try Bloom. Now Bloom is interesting because obviously it has an obvious effect. Thing with bloom is if I go to say here and I um, increase the intensity 
you get this nice effect, right? You can also increase or reduce the threshold. But the the, the fun thing with this uh, the scatter of the boom is you can see it brightens up the area too. So you get like an interesting warm effect that also brightens up the darkness and shadow. So this is another technique I sometimes use um, if I want to make things more warm and brighten it up a little bit. So you can reduce the intensity a little bit. You can see that it's kind of has this interesting effect everywhere. Okay, so that's another thing. Other things to consider are sometimes you want specific reflection probes on certain things. I'm not going to do it here. But what you will notice that there are some issues going on. So we're going to click reflection probe. I'm just going to do a quick bake of reflection. Cool. And the next thing you want to do is uh, check what's being baked or not baked. So if we go to bake light map, we are using a lot of resources. But you can see that the clothes, the lamp, and a couple of other things are not showing up in the light baking. Which is just a quick way, because I don't want to click every mesh and see if it says static, right? So if I click this one, it says static, and everything is on. So that means these are light props. So we're going to add some light props. Why do we add light probes? That's because we need the bounce light to brighten up. Either you will notice something popping out too much or they might be too uh, dark. So we'll do light probes. And we'll do it very quickly. Not too complicated. Again, there are many ways of doing light probes and there are different ways of uh, dealing with it, which we can also explain to you in my paid advanced courses. Again, if you lead leave some uh, likes, uh, join uh, lightingbot.com and uh, subscribe to the newsletter so I know you're interested and then I'll let you know. So let's do light probe and I'm just going to quickly add the one here. Like there. Normally I would make them tighter though. I wouldn't have this, this huge gap that I'm doing now. For the sake of example, this I don't need this, and we can put this on blend probes. Okay, and we need some in here. Make sure they don't go outside too much, because if it goes out, it picks up the light from outside the wall, and it will end up with like super white bright light. So might happen now we'll see if that is the case and this seems to be not reacting either so we're first doing this to see does it solve the problem as we do another bake and let's see it's only 2000 so now what happened well now you can see that the light probe is picking up all the indirect light in the scene and it's making this bright making this bright making this bright suddenly this isn't black anymore and so on this one is of course still dark because it's still in the shadow and that's fine and the same goes with this area you could tweak it actually Again, there are tricks to make this brighter without doing more lighting using light probes and reflection probes. Again, that's for advanced tutorials in the near future. <coughs> this is like super beginner. If you want the intermediate, again, newsletter, and uh, I'll know you're interested. So let's add an override and let's see what else we can do. You can add a space uh, embed occlusion on top of the bake, which I don't recommend, but just to show what happens. See you're losing the ambient bake rather than keeping it because you're adding uh, this one on top which I believe uh, overrides it, right? 
So let's say you did want to use it. You can then tweak it even more than you can the light bake. Uh, well, you can tweak the light bake too. Remember, we uh, made it very specific on purpose. You can tweak the radius until it makes sense, and so on. Spread it out if you want to, or you can make it tighter if that's what you want. This uh, reduces the quality and increases the quality, right? So you can see it has some weird artifacts. So you really have to make sure that it's tight and clean when you're uh, doing this kind of stuff. And it's also expensive. So I'm just going to turn off because we already baked mine. If I were to turn all of these off and double check our directional light, you can see this one is on uh, warm yellow. So I'm going to make it white like so the reason for that is when i look here and i look for the white hair it's not actually white that's why you do white balancing color correction to make sure it actually is as intended so i'm going to tweak it so i can see that the blue is blue and the white is white right so now this actually is white balance a lot you can see everything very clearly now and then you keep it now you can tint it afterwards say you wanted it i don't know some joker mood or and you can see it, it's have an easier time tinting it if i turn it off you can see it doesn't actually tint it correctly and the reason it doesn't tint it that same way is because it's not white so we're going to do it in 40. we're going to keep it like that and we go back to the directional light and you can see that we kept it on white and you can also of course color choose your color here as well if you want a different color of the light rather than a filter and it makes it warm right but you can also see that certain areas are pretty bright they're pretty white i can just do quick general lighting and let's add a uh, post-processing for example for um, let's do lift gamma and gain now lift gamma gain is what i guess i'll just show you right so if i do this it's lifting you can see it's kind of lifting the foreground of the image let's say it like that if I do gamma, you can see it's misting, uh, lifting the mid ground, right? Or the mid tones. And when I say the foreground, I really meant the shadow in this case. Uh, it's just a lot of shadow we have, so that's why this is, has a huge effect. And gain is normally the highlight. You can see it's getting highlighted. So let's say it's too bright here and you don't want to do anything, you're in a hurry, you're in a production pipeline and you have a feedback from Microsoft or Sony or whatever and you're like, oh shit, I gotta do something and you can try and tone it down if you wanted to. But it's very important that you have all of these the way you want it, you want to have it first. And when I turn it back, I realize, eh, kind of want it darker. So now if I do gain, you can see how it has a more control. It doesn't um, do it the opposite way, where it gets too dark, which you saw a minute ago. And that's because this exposure is more balanced. So I can turn it down a little bit. And I can turn this up a little bit. And I can uh, lift this a bit if I wanted to. Okay, so that's what this does. But alternatively, you have another method which is called um, shadow which is the old one and it's kind of explanatory it says shadow and mid tone in this particular case actually again i'm not going to show the advanced features but again you can do the same here i can brighten up specifically the shadows because it's a bright day right you can brighten up the mid tone or you can say okay we're gonna make the mid tone a little bit brighter and we're gonna make the highlights 
bit darker. Now when you do these type of methods, you can see it creates artifacts. So you want to be careful. Another thing is if you just want to color control rather than, because uh, you can do that here too, right? You can uh, move the colors, and you can give them a mood, right? And the same is for the lifting gamma. You can uh, move them around a little bit. Say you want the kind of blue color, and the middle one you want maybe a bit warmer, and then you want like super red to make it like even more what you want to have it. Alternatively, you also have something called split toning, which is basically looks like this. Or this and it kind of combines two colors from the shadow and the highlights and then you can use the balancing to kind of decide where the balance goes right alternately you obviously want to understand color theory a little bit and play with the highlights uh, so you actually get a cool look right that works for you what else? You also have a lot of other things. I'm not going to show all of them, as I said. Tone mapping is also probably a good idea to use. Most people use ACES, but neutral might work in this case because it brightens everything a bit up. Alternatively, you can use custom, and if you know how to control the darkness a bit, you can then say okay let's reduce this a bit you can then use shoulder length which kind of makes the curve smoother so it doesn't become drastic you can increase or reduce the length of it and you can then add the angle to kind of darken some more areas if you wanted to okay and in this case i'm just going to keep it because you generally want to do some kind of you generally want to do one of these four techniques, or all of them, or some of them, or half of them, generally speaking. You also have shadows. There are different contact shadow which will uh, work on specific things. And you also have uh, micro shadow, which should work on clots like this. Yeah, you see that? It creates those extra detail. You can see that from far away as well and the same is with other ones as well now there's one thing you have to keep in mind you can see the micro shadow is working here as well you have these are expensive all of these costs right this is again profiling and other topics in the future lightingbot.com sign up for newsletter i'm telling you guys there's a lot more than you think there is a lot more to learn a lot more to understand and lastly you also have the star sky let's see if there's anything let's use morning now probably should have done this first but you see that it is just uh, outside to what you want now if we didn't do exposure invert and bloom white balance let's just remove this and remove the ones I probably won't be using you end up with a different look if you don't do the exposure and the adjustment uh, ahead of time there's also pros and cons because we're inside so you want to make sure when you're inside that you are actually doing the correct exposure because if I go outside it's actually white now so let's say we're outside and we look outside and we're going, okay, I want it to be this bright. Or maybe you want it to be more or less. Maybe something like this. So you have to go inside and you have to look. Now, 
that's why exposure comes in on these different modes right you can uh, adjust it accordingly to find the balance uh for um forgot your name but um for you you need to go to automatic or automatic histogram uh, for your city to get uh, brighter when you go into dark areas and, and darker when you go out to brighter areas um, i have fixed just to speed up the example another thing that would happen if if i didn't have the light props already so if i turn them off maybe i can recreate some of the stuff i know and that will happen uh, yeah so you can see when you see these issues which should be obvious you can see this is blue this is blue this is blue this is because of it's picking up the environment because i put it um, that's the setting i put so when you see this that's because these are dynamic objects right and they need light probes so the minute i do light probes and then do build problem solved okay another thing which is very common when you buy purchase assets and stuff like that or even when you do your um, writing probably the last thing i should point out just so you understand the value of going to the newsletter is i don't know if it's it's it will happen here or not but very often when you're working on different scenes uh, light will go through the wall okay and you you don't want them to go through the wall uh, and you don't know what to do the different this is working for now because of the shadows and settings uh, but assuming it didn't work a te technique I normally use instead is I will create very quickly and I'll just show you it won't be correct but you'll understand what to do because th these are all obvious for me but I, I learned that it's not obvious for everyone else you could add a plane right and say this is the wall you want to control you can add the plane and you can see here that when you add the plane in front it's taking away the light that you don't want but now you might say oh, yeah, i want to go out i don't want to see this though you might say well that's not a problem you just go to cast shadow and shadow only so this will cast the shadow and obviously you want to make sure that it's placed in such a way that it makes sense right so in this case um this is a very old scene so i kind of know the problems that used to happen anyway it would normally happen here so i would just do this because in this case we are inside right so it doesn't really matter okay so anyway you get the gr uh We have uh, made a quick scene. There are obviously is always some tweaks I would do. For example, I would tweak the reflections a bit more. And I would maybe play around with one more reflection just to see if this one becomes better. And I would turn off. Actually, I would turn on based on roughness. This is what I forgot to turn on as well. To break all. There we go. So that fixed that. So yeah, I mean, it's not bad. This is obviously bright because it does not have enough light probes. So you would try and fix that as explained. And you should uh, be good to go just uh, let's just do that in a minute here let's see so 
see that like I told you earlier so I'm curious if that's the reason it would be funny if it was the reason so I'm gonna put it here and I'm gonna do a new light fake see I told you so this is this is what I'm talking about there's so many small things we don't pay attention to and people don't know about so this is the basic this is at the beginning of the tutorial like I was speaking organic kind of showed you a lot of different scenarios and uh, situation and tips and tricks of uh, how it might be for you and hopefully you enjoyed it and you want to learn more about tweaking and adjusting things even further again lightingbot.com sign up for the newsletter get uh, the promotional or discount code or at least a heads up uh, when the promotion is active so you get the cheaper version thank you for watching and have a nice day